my company, Common Craft, is known for making videos that explain something complex in about three minutes. And my journey to becoming an explainer started, I think, in my sophomore year of college. I was uh, taking accounting, I was gonna be a business major. And I don't know how many of you have taken accounting classes or know about accounting, but people always told me that, oh, in the beginning it'll be confusing, but then a light bulb will go on and you'll get it and things will, will fit together. And that didn't really happen for me. Um, and part of the reason, I think, was the first day of class, I sat down, and the teacher went to the board and went directly into debits and credits and T accounts. And I just kind of shook my head and had no idea what was going on because I had no idea what a debit was. I had never heard the word debit before. And that kind of kicked off this semester where I felt like I, I was lost and I was trying to memorize what was an expense and what was a revenue because I wasn't seeing the big picture of accounting. And looking back, I think what was happening was that I didn't see any context. Nobody sat me down and said, this is a business and here's how money flows into and out of a business and here's why accounting is, a, is, an, is an important part of that. Um, I was focused on the trees and there was this forest out there that nobody really showed me and that kept me sort of from ever really getting account. I don't think I ever had a balance sheet that really balanced, maybe today. Um, but I made it through and went, uh, had got a couple of degrees and, and then ended up starting Common Craft in 2003. And my job with Common Craft initially, I was an independent consultant. And it was my job to work with executives and companies who were trying to understand these new social tools that were hit hitting the web. It would have been called social media consulting now, but then it was online community consulting, message boards and blogs. And a lot of my clients had the same problems. They, they knew the word blog and knew what a blog was, but they didn't really know how to apply it or how it could be a part of their business or a part of what they were doing. And when I saw that, it made me feel like I did in that, that accounting class, that they were focused on the trees and not seeing the forest. So, and that was really one of the first times I felt like that this is a problem. Like this is a problem that needs a solution somehow to help people see the forest first before they see the trees. And on a similar note, not, not long after that, I went to a, um, a small tech conference in uh, Silicon Valley, and there was a tech CEO presenting, and he mentioned RSS. And some of you probably know RSS, it stands for Really Simple Syndication, but it basically provides a way for you to sub subscribe to a website, and then when new things are posted on that website, it comes to you immediately. It makes reading, reading the web easier. But the CEO was there presenting and mentioned RSS. Someone in the crowd said, raised his hand and said, what's RSS? And he looked at him and said, it's an XML-based syndication format. So, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really help him or anybody else in the room. But I sat there and it was like a seminal moment for me and I was like, this is that same problem. These are all trees and there's no forest here. And th this is a problem that, that goes further than this. And it kind of caused me to think that I needed to, to start trying to solve that problem by writing blog posts that were like RSS in plain English, wikis in plain English, and just do them in text form and did that and they were, they were great. Um, for my purposes of using with clients and people like that, but didn't think much about it. But then after that conference, I started to think that there's all these really powerful tools out there that are just coming on, onto the scene. RSS is one, Bl wikis, blogs, social bookmarking, social networking, all these things. And a lot of them weren't being adopted that quickly, not, not as quickly as all the geeks wanted anyway. The thing about those tools is they're often free, they often all you need is an internet connection to get to them, and they can often have a positive impact on your life or the user's life. And the biggest thing that was keeping them from being adopted was explanation. It was the geeks doing the explaining, and they just weren't very good at it. They were really focused on the details and the trees and, and not thinking about the bigger picture. So that's really formed this idea that Common Craft, maybe in the future, could be a company that would help solve that problem and fill that gap by, by doing something that would, that would build that context around these tools. And part of the, that evolution was going, what happened in 2006, two big things happened. Uh, first, Sachi, my wife, quit her job and joined Common Craft as our second employee. So it just became me and her. Uh, that gave us a little bit more flexibility uh, to experiment, and it was also that year 
that YouTube really blew up and got to be a big deal. And it was very clear to a lot of people that, that, this, that online video was going to be a big thing. And we started to think, how could we make Common Craft a bigger part of this online video world? And saw the opportunity to go back to those old blog posts and, and find ways to make videos out of those blog posts that were meant to explain RSS and wikis and things like that. So we decided to do it, and our first, first stab at it was we set up a, a tripod and set up a whiteboard on the wall, and I put on a nice shirt and tried to be the guy looking at the camera and drawing and talking at the same time, and it, and it really, really didn't work at all. And <laughs> I got frustrated by it. Um, and then almost immediately, Sachi had the idea of instead of doing it on the wall, what if we pointed the camera down onto the whiteboard on the floor or on a table and use hands and markers and paper cutouts to tell the story instead of having it on the wall. So we both loved that idea and made that happen basically in a spare bedroom. We, and and grant, granted, we didn't have any video production or any kind of video education. We'd never read a book or taken a class about making videos and we're not trained educators at all. But it didn't stop us from making um, a video that explained RSS. And we did it with bedroom lamps and a camera that we bought when we were traveling and just the very most basic things we could. But that video was RSS in plain English. We edited it, edited it, that's really hard to say, um, and put it on YouTube, uh, sent some emails to friends, tweeted about it a couple of times and went to bed and woke up the next day and it had gone completely viral. Like it was on all over blogs, it was getting comments every few minutes, tens of thousands of views, and it ended up being literally the most exciting day of my life. Uh, it was really um, an amazing time to see that happen. And, and it wasn't long after that that we started to think like, well, are we a one hit wonder? Like, <laughs> can we do this again? Is this something that, that we can do? Because it was totally unexpected. And what happened was the next month we made a video called Wikis in plain English that some of you raised your hand that had seen uh, about people that, did a camp, that went on a camping trip and planned the camping trip using a wiki and followed that up with social networking. And, and since then, we've published just about one video a month since then um, in that same style, what, they call, what, pe what people call common craft style. So that summer, you know, four or five months after that first video, we kind of had realized that we were onto something. We had a format that worked. We had a lot of people that really liked what we were doing and really thought it was effective. And it came time to talk about what we're talking about now is scale and spread. Like, what do we do with this opportunity or this big idea? And Sachi and I took some time to really think about that because opportunities are funny things. Like, you can, you can have the best opportunity in the world, but if you implement it in just the slightly wrong way, it can mess a lot of things up. And because Sachi and I are a two-person company working from home, we're around each other 24-7, 365, she's in the room today. Um, <laughs> um, if, if, if a decision we made for the business was a bad decision and made us unhappy in the business, it would impact everything in our lives. So we tried to be really deliberate about that decision-making, about what we do with this opportunity. So what, what we did was started to think about evaluating opportunities based on constraints based on some ideas that we would hold true to and, and apply them to different opportunities. So the, the first opportunity, the first constraint that we thought about was our size. We're fiercely independent. We, don't, we didn't want an HR department. So we decided that we would be a two-person company and that would be the limit of the, the size that Common Craft would be. And that whatever opportunities we had, it had to work with a two-person company or, or it wouldn't be something that we could do. The second one, was that we would do videos, we continue making videos, but that they should, they should be something positive. They could, should contribute something positive to the world. And that was something that we felt like that over, over the long term would help us feel good about what we were doing and stay motivated by what, what we were doing. And the third thing was simply to support our future work. There needed to be some sort of model for us to be able to, to make money in doing these videos. So with those constraints in mind, we started to look at the opportunities. And there's lots of shiny objects out there when you think like, oh, how, what am I going to do here? And the first thing, which is what conventional wisdom would tell us to do, is advertising. You know, it's like, uh, it's like TV, where you make something interesting, you attract people to it, and interrupt them with ads. You've all seen it on the, the tube every night. And that's a model. It's a great model. It works for a lot of people. 
But this was 2007, 2008, and then YouTube hadn't quite gotten there in terms of their advertising model, so that really wouldn't work for us. Also, we're just not really big fans of advertising and don't really want to be in that world. And um, it, it just wasn't something we wanted to do. So the, the other big opportunity was um, custom videos. So a lot of companies came to us and asked us to make videos for their products, and we've done a number of them. The second one we did was Google Docs in plain English, which a lot of you I think have seen, um, and it, it's, it's a great model, and there's a lot of folks out there with really successful businesses doing it, but it also has some issues that I think rubbed us a little bit the wrong way. And the first one has to do with scale, right? And that's really kind of what we're talking about is scale in this, in this part of the, the conference, because custom videos are a service, right? And as a service, it's like a, it's like a haircut. Like, like if you own a barber shop, the only way your business is gonna grow is if you hire more barbers. And, and custom videos are the same way. We would have to hire more and more producers to make more videos to have our business grow. So it doesn't scale without adding people constantly to accept more and more of those projects. At the same time, custom videos are, are promotional, a lot of them at heart. And we didn't really, we were much more motivated to make videos that, that helped educators than helped companies sell products. That just sort of philosophically is what we wanted to do. So we still do custom videos, and like I said, it's, it's a, a good thing for us and a lot of other companies, but we thought that there must be other ways. There must be more scalable ways for us to put things, to put our videos to work. So a couple of, a couple of years after we started making the videos, a couple, like one big thing happened. Uh, and by then we had 20 or 30 videos in our library. Um, teachers and librarians and trainers at big corporations and all kinds of educators and, and individuals that we're not even sure what they were doing with the videos uh, came to us and said, we love your videos, we don't want the ones on YouTube, um, and we know you have a lot more in your library, we would love, love some way to embed your videos in my learning management system or my internet. I wanna be able to download the video files and, and, and use them in my computer in my presentations. And a light bulb went on for us that, wow, this is, they want to be customers of ours in the form of licensing. And it became clear that this video library of ours that we had been working on and not really making any money on was actually, were actually digital products. And then a digital product is something like Microsoft Word or QuickBooks that you can make it once and license it many, many times. And that's, that sort of changed the way we looked at our business and changed our website so that we made it very easy for people to be able to, to use our videos through licensing that was completely, um, completely legal, so to speak, and high quality versions of everything. And for, since that time, we've been able to, <laughs> we've been able to uh, have customers around the world and reach thousands and thousands of teachers, uh, librarians, consultants, and all these, peoples, all these people um, with our videos. And I think that's a, a scale and spread that we really love. But there's one more part to this that I haven't touched on at all that I think is really one of the most important things to us, is that if you go to, to YouTube and search for Common Craft Style, you'll see hundreds of videos that were done by teachers and students in classrooms to explain things like photosynthesis or the War of 1812 or whatever it is, and they call them Common Craft Style videos. And I think that's something that uh, we never expected, and that's the, really the kind of scale and spread that we love to see. Thanks so much.